We have calculated the probability distribution of weekly stock returns in a previous Python coding video on this channel. However, what if we want to go deeper and see what the stock return probability for this week is given the return of last week? For example, if the S&P went up 3% last week, what is the probability that the S&P will go up again another 3% this week? This is conditional probability where we find the probability of something to happen given that a previous action occurred. Let's start with a data frame with weekly percent returns of a stock. Check out the quant analysis course in Python probability distribution of stock returns in the top right to get weekly return data frame. Since we are comparing the current returns against the previous week's return, we can create a new column called percent change prev for previous using the shift function and then the fill value equaling zero converts the na values at the first row into a zero the data frame will now have a new percent change prev column to compare against the percent change the previous column will act as our x feature while the percent change is our y the events in a conditional probability needs to be partially dependent to yield useful results. If two events are completely independent of each other, then the occurrence of one event does not affect the probability of the other, and the conditional probability will be the same as the unconditional probability. Let's run a regression line and plot the previous returns as our x and the current week's return of the SPY ETF, our Y, on our scatter plot. With our X and Y defined, we can fit a simple linear regression model on our weekly returns. We can visualize this model by defining a Y prediction line against the range of X values. We can customize the plot with a custom title, X and Y axes, with a legend, and show the plot in the notebook. Here we see the plot cluster toward the center of 0% return, but this does not look linear since the plots cluster around 0. We can confirm this using the Spearman's rank correlation coefficient, where the null hypothesis states that there is no monotonic relationship between the two variables, meaning the variables could be independent. If the Spearman results are near zero, then the two variables could be independent of each other. The results for the SPY ETF is near zero and a p-value of 0.003, which is statistically significant. This result tells us that there is a small negative correlation between the previous week's and the current week's return. However, since the Spearman's value is near zero, the previous week's return has a practically negligible impact on the current week's return. One could argue that weekly returns have some dependency because of FOMO and investors will continue to push the price up. Others can argue that any fundamentals that occurred in the previous week is priced in by the time the new week comes, so the returns are independent. For now, we will assume a weak relationship based on the Spearman results and calculate the conditional probabilities of SPY weekly returns. To code this, we would need to define ranges for both the percent change previous and the percent change. We could do this by creating bins for percentage change values with specific intervals. And these ranges are defined with a 
uh, numpy infinite and numpy ne uh, negative infinity to include all possible values. So here the ranges are in a list, so is the labels. And these labels are for each bin range to categorize the data into groups. Our groups are less than negative 4%, negative 4% to negative 3%, negative 3% to negative 2%, negative 2% to negative 1%, and then so on, all the way up to greater than 4%. Next, we would have to categorize the percent change previous into bins and assign the corresponding label. And then we would also have to do this with the percent change as well. Percent change previous again represents the previous week's return. And then the percent change column represents the current week's return. The pd.cut function in Python, which is part of the pandas library, is used to bin continuous numerical data into discrete intervals, such as bins. It essentially segments the sorts the data into bins, which can then be used for analysis, visualization, or categorization. After we have categorized both the percent change previous and the percent change into bins, we can then initialize data frames for storing these probabilities and the counts of instances into bin combinations. The rows and columns are indexed by the defined labels. We can create a probability data frame calling it probDF and a count of instances data frame called countDF. We can initialize the data frame with pd.dataframe, index with labels and the columns that we've created. Since there is a current week's list and a previous week's list, we would have to do a nested for loop to calculate all possible probabilities for each combination of previous bin and current bin. We can say for prev bin in labels and then for current bin in labels. And then we can count the occurrences where the previous bin and the current bin match the specific bin, count the total of occurrences where the previous bin matches the specific bin, store count of join occurrences in the count data frame And finally, calculate the conditional probability, which is what is the probability of the current bin occurring given the previous bin. If no occurrences for the previous bin are found, assign a probability of zero. And then finally, store the calculated probability in a prob df. This all happens in the nested loop to calculate and complete the prob df and count df. To ensure that the data frame values are correct, we can convert the count df values into integers for readability, and then convert the probability data frame values to floats to better match numerical representation. Now that we have our probability and count data frames, we can create custom columns such as negative return and positive return columns to calculate what the probability would be for the stock to increase positively or decline negatively in this current week, given the data that we know from the previous week. For a negative return, we can say negative uh, less than 4%, negative 4% to negative 3%, negative 3% to negative 2%, negative 2% to negative 1%, and then negative 1% to 0% as our list. Positive return, same thing, but for positive ranges. And then we can sum up the probabilities for a negative return bin across all the columns that are in the negative range. We could do this by performing a dot sum axis equals one, and then summing up all the columns that match the negative return list. Same thing for positive, except now we're calculating all the positive range bins. Similarly, we can also perform this in the count DF 
for the negative and positive instances. Finally, we could also calculate the probability of SPY or the stock increasing more than 1%. We can also calculate the probability of more than 2 and more than 3%. To perform the calculation for probability of greater than 1%, we can add up the ranges from 1% to 2%, 2% to 3%, 3% to 4%, and then add greater than 4% to find what the probability would be for the stock to increase more than 1%. Now we have a probability and count of occurrences for each pair of weekly returns on the SPY ETF. Let's make sure the tables are calculated correctly. Let's say we want to know the conditional probability of SPY going up more than 4% given that last week's percent return was between 0% and 1%. We can calculate this by looking at our count data frame. The numerator will be the number of instances where both occurred, while the denominator is all instances of 0% to 1% return. This provides us a ratio of 7 over 417, or 0 0.0167 or 1.6%. This is what makes out of the money call options so risky and a reason why you want to be on the selling side of the call option. Let's see how we might use these probabilities when selling covered call options. Let's say we have 100 shares of the SPY ETF. We are holding 100 shares of the S&P because we believe the value will increase in the long term. However, in the short term, we can sell covered call options against our 100 shares to collect passive income in the form of premium. We gain premium because we face the risk of assignment and being forced to sell 100 shares of SPY at the agreed upon strike price. In our probability table, I created additional columns, the greater than 1%, 2%, and 3%. Notice how the probability for SPY to go up over 1% this week, given that SPY went up 1% to 2% or 2% to 3%, is only 20%. This means that there is a 80% chance that SPY does not increase by 1% this week. SPY is at $596.49, so a 1% increase in the price will make the stock become $602.45. We can sell a call option with a strike price above 602. We can sell the 603 strike price because we have an 80% chance of not being assigned according to this conditional probability table. If we do not get assigned, then we keep our 100 shares and keep the premium $45 premium we collected for taking on this risk. If we do get assigned, this means SPY surpasses the 603 strike price, forcing us to sell our shares at 603. We keep the $45 premium we collected, but we miss out on potential capital gains. Notice how the probability of SPY increasing over 1% this week increases as we increase or decrease the previous week's return. If SPY decreased by more than 4% last week, then it becomes a 42% chance of SPY going up more than 1% this week. Likewise, if SPY increased more than 4% last week, then SPY has a 32% chance of increasing more than 1% this week. Because of these higher probabilities, we might want to sell a higher strike price call option to decrease our risk of assignment. If SPY decreased 4% last week, investors may want to buy SPY this week at a discount price, pushing the price higher this week. Therefore, instead of a 603 strike price, I may want to sell a 606 strike price call option. I get only $15 in premium because I lowered my risk thanks to a higher strike price. Hope you enjoyed this coding video about conditional probabilities and how you can implement this in a covered call option strategy. 
Check out my other coding videos on Entrendias. Like and subscribe if you found the video helpful, and I will see you in the next one.